Hello, everybody. Thank you for being here um, for our very first Carter County Collaborative Meeting. I'm still letting people in as I start talking, um, but we, since we do have such a, a big group today, super grateful for all of y'all being here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with introductions, if that's okay. Um, I did want to make everyone aware that I am recording this meeting um, so that anybody who isn't able to be here with us today will be able to watch it later. Um, I stuck the link to the, um, the agenda in the chat box, so feel free to, to click on that and follow along if you would like. Um, so if it's okay with everybody, I'm just going to call names and if you'll share who you are and who you're with. Um, we'll start with Alana Leonberg. Apologies if I mess up everyone's names today. Hi, um, I'm Alana Leonberg, and I'm the um, Outreach and Homeowner Services Manager with Holston Habitat for Humanity. Thanks for being here, Elisa. All right, we'll come back to Elisa Johnson. Um, Angela Flimmer. Hi there, I'm Angela Flimmer. I'm a nurse practitioner at the Downtown Day Center and I am also undergraduate faculty for ETSU. Thanks for being here. Um, Bernie. If I could hit the right button, that would help. <laughs> uh, I'm Bernie. I'm the library director over at the Elizabeth and Carter County Public Library. Thank you, Beth Bear. Hello, everyone. I'm Beth Bear with uh, Carter County Schools Coordinated School Health. So. Thank you. Elisa says hi, everyone. She um, is having audio issues and she's from Blue Care. Um, Chelsea J. Hey guys, um, it's Chelsea Johnson. Um, the, I'm the, I'm sorry, I'm tongue tied. I'm the outreach coordinator with Volunteers of America. Thanks for being here. I'm Cheryl Morris. We can come back to her. Um, Courtney Bean. Hey, I'm Courtney Bean. I'm the Main Street Director for Downtown Elizabethton. Thank you. Crystal Carter. I am Crystal Carter. I am the Director of Community Impact and Programming at United Way of East Tennessee Highlands. Thank you. Denise. I'm Denise Woods, um, the new employee with Action uh, with uh, Carter County Collaborative. <laughs> Thank you, um, Dolly. Hi, my name is Dolly Reeves. I'm the project coordinator at Carter County Drug Prevention. Thank you, Emma. Hi, everyone. I'm Emma Carpenter, and I'm president of Carter County Drug Prevention Youth Coalition. Thank you, Erin. Hi, I'm Erin Culbertson with the Department of Children's Services. I am the Resource Linkage and Volunteer Coordinator for Northeast Region. Thank you. Felicia? Hi, I'm Felicia Atkins. I'm the Family Service and Health Specialist for Telemon Early Head Start. Thank you. I'm Lupe. Hi, I'm Lupe Armengol, and you guys can't really see my face, sorry. I'm with uh, Tennessee Voices, a Survivor Connection Program for the Northeast Region. Thank you. Heather Lee. Sorry, I had to unmute. Good. I'm having technical difficulties today. It feels like Monday all over again. I can't take it. One Monday in a week is enough. I'm Heather Lee Sifford. I'm the Trauma Injury Prevention Coordinator with uh, Johnson City Med Center and Ballot Health. Thank you. Jane. 
There, it took me a bit to unmute. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Jane Harper. I'm with the Tennessee Department of Health, and I'm the Regional Health Council Coordinator. Thank you. I'm Jennifer. Happy New Year, everybody. I am Jennifer Jenkins, and I'm with the Department of Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities, um, working with the Katie Beckett program. I am the case manager for K uh, a case manager in Katie Beckett. So glad to be here. Thanks for being here. Kathleen. Hey, everybody. I'm Kathleen Collins, and I am the Substance Misuse Response Coordinator with the Tennessee Department of Health in Northeast Region. Thank you, Kale. Hey everybody, I'm Kelly Kitchens. I'm with the City of Elizabethan Parks and Recreation Department. Thank you, Kim. Hey everybody, uh, my name is Kim Nave and I am a licensed professional counselor in Elizabethan. Thank you, Lacey. Hi everyone, I'm Lacey Young with UT Extension Carter County and I work with the Nutrition Education Program. Thank you. I'm Margaret. Hi there. I am Margaret Counts. I'm the Executive Director at Contact 211 of Northeast Tennessee. And I'm actually a guest, not a member, but I enjoy hearing everything that's going on in Carter County because it is one of the eight counties we serve. Well, you're a member now. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Marissa. Hi, Marissa Arambaru with Village Behavioral Health. Thank you. I lost my place. Sorry. Um, Miss Mary. Hi, everyone. I'm Mary Shell. I am a coach with Child Care Resources and Referral, and I'm the lead coach for the East Tennessee region. Thank you. Megan. Hi everyone, my name is Megan Yarnell and I'm the Trauma Injury Prevention Coordinator for Nice Wonger Children's Hospital and Ballot Health. Thank you, Molly Colley. All right, we'll come back to Molly. Nicole. Hey, I'm Nicole Moore, the Public Relations Coordinator for Elizabethan City School System. Thank you. Norma. Hi, I'm Norma Morrison, um, retired from Milligan University and representing Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. It's good to be with all of you. Thank you. Rebecca. Hi everyone, I'm Becca. I am the Community Educator over at Changes Possible Family Violence Shelter in Irwin. Thank you. I'm Samantha. Uh, I'm Samantha Prater and I'm the director of the Children's Advocacy Center of the First Judicial District. Um, we serve Carter Johnson, Washington and Unicoi counties. Thank you. Um, Scott. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Scott Skill with Kennedy Drug Task Force. Thanks for being here. I'm Shannon. I'm Shannon Payne. I'm the Peak Mentor Program Coordinator for the City of Elizabeth. Sherry. Hi, I'm Sherry Freeman. I don't know if you can hear me. Yep. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, good. It's working this time. I'm with um, Carter County Health Council, and I'm a retired assistant professor from the College of Nursing at ETSU. Thank you. Sonia. Hello, I'm Sonia Miller with Carter County Schools. Um, Susan. I'm Suzanne Gooden, Tennessee Voices um, for the Northeast region. Thank you. Um, and then Susan Miller. Hi, I'm so excited to be here with this incredible group. I'm with the Tennessee Department of Health and I'll be presenting later today on some data and the dashboard. So happy to be here. Thank you. Terry. All 
All right, um, Kathy. Hey, I'm Kathy Campbell with Northeast Community Credit Union. I am the Community Engagement Director. Thank you. Tina. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Tina Bishop. I'm with Navigate Reconnect, which is the outreach portion of the Tennessee Reconnect grant for adult learners in the state. Um, I'm located in Knoxville, Tennessee, but we have um, navigators both in Washington County and Carter County. So um, happy to be with everyone. Thank you. Mike? Thanks, Julian. It's uh, good to be here today, and, and I hope everybody's doing well. My name is Mike Maines, and I'm the Park and Rec Director for the Seed of Elizabeth. Thank you. Um, Dr. DeLucia? Hi, I'm Tony DeLucia. I'm a professor, uh, troublemaker over at the Quillen College of Medicine. Um, very happy to be here. Um, brand new grandfather with a uh, healthy baby born with some of the vulnerabilities that we always talk about with our, our groups here. Happy to be working on a lot of the data needs that we have. We need to see baby pictures. Haven't been able to get much of that yet. Can't even get our Zoom to work. Oh, um, Valerie. Hello, um, I'm Valerie Lester. I am a community navigator and CPRS with the Mother's Recovery Program at Ballot Health in Greenville. We will be serving 10 counties in Northeast Tennessee and that will also include Carter County. And I have two other staff members here with me as well. I'll let them introduce themselves. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm April Addison. I am a, a CPRS and a community navigator here at Ballard with the Mother's Recovery Project. And I am also um, am um, certified in um, some harm reduction classes and things of that nature too. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. And I am Jillian Carroll, and I am one of the case managers um, here. Thank y'all. If y'all don't care to stick your names in the chat box so Kelly can record y'all being here for our minutes, that would be awesome. Okay, thank you very much for having us. Thank you. I'm Vicki. I'm Vicki Clark with UT Extension Service. I'm a Family and Consumer Science Extension Agent in Carter County. Thank you. I'm Yolanda. I'm Yolanda Vesto. Um, probably the one without, without any, you know, great big stuff that goes along with me. Uh, I am a retired nurse from Carter County. I have worked as a nurse in Carter County for many years. Right now, I am probably your civilian intake person if you want to call it that i volunteer when we can at sycamore shows but right now we can't volunteer because of corona and, and i too am, am a new but i'm a new great-grandmother oh congratulations glad to be aboard yes thank you okay emily Hi everybody i am emily barton i'm with ut extension with the 4-h youth development program Thank you. And Jill? Hello. This is Jill Stott. I'm um, the Northeast Regional Coordinator from Tennessee Commission on Children and Youth. Thank you. Anybody else that I missed? We've got some folks introducing themselves <laughs> in the chat um, that are having audio issues, so make sure you check there too. And then anybody else that I missed? All right. Can I just say how excited I am to have 50 people together from Carter County um, on this meeting today? Um, if y'all don't know what in the world you are in for today, um, I'm so excited about this collaborative. This is something um, 
that folks from Carter County Community Advisory Board, Carter County Health Council, and then us at Carter County Drug Prevention have been working on um, for several months now. And so we're really grateful to Jane Harper, especially for collecting data from all of you about what you wanted to see in a collaborative meeting and what something like this could look like. Um, our greatest hope is that it reduces meeting fatigue for all of you. We know what it's like staring at a, a Zoom screen all day. And so we saw the similarities in these three meetings and really hope that, that this collaborative can bring all of us together um, in one place and be able to really impact Carter County through the work that um, is amazing that, that you all do throughout, um, throughout your own, own sections and organizations. So thank you, thank you for being here. It, um, this is like, like, I don't know, a dream come true or something. We've been working on it for so long. Um, and so we're, I'm just excited to see everybody here. Um, thank you for introducing yourselves. Um, I did just have a few little housekeeping things. Um, the first one is we drafted some bylaws um, for this group specifically. So as Carter County Drug Prevention, um, operating to be our own 501c3, we'll have to maintain our bylaws. Um, so you'll see those included in the um, in the bylaw packet that, that you can see if you click on that link. Um, but then the we also will have bylaws specific to the Carter County Collaborative. And so that really kind of determines how this group operates. Um, and I wanted to make sure everybody had a copy of those and um, didn't have any changes or anything you feel like we're missing or wanted to add um, to that. So I will also put the link in the chat for you all. Ooh, maybe I will. Um, so you can look at it if you don't have it. Oh, hold on. So there is that. Um, if we can kind of maybe we revisit this next time if you all want more time to review them and look at them. Um, or if anybody has feedback on them now, please share that feedback and let us know. If you are prepared to approve these bylaws as written right now, um, would you just raise your hand? Okay. And then poor Kelly Kitchens has to count all these hands. So let's all send good vibes to Kelly Kitchens as she counts our hands. Kelly, you tell me when you're good to go. It's going to be just a minute. <laughs> Might be easier to say who didn't raise their hand. This is true. <laughs> FYI, in other meetings that we have on Zoom, we just either have people write approve in the chat box or we vote by abstention and disapproval so that we don't have to spend time counting hands and stuff. It makes it so much easier. For sure. Um, the way we have it written into our bylaws right now is that we can do a process um, called fist to five. So if you agree strongly, if you're like 100% good to go with it, you can um, use five fingers. If you don't disagree or if you disagree completely, um, you can just do a closed fist. Or if you're somewhere in the middle, you can give it a two, three, or a four. Um, so that is kind of the the process we will use on, on voting um, per our bylaws, unless y'all want to change that in some way. Um, the biggest thing with this one is just having, having approval um, so we can 
we can do that kind of any way we want to. If it, if Kelly, you want us to put it in the chat, we can do that too. Or if you're almost there, we'll just keep going. Well, I'm showing a lot more without raised hands than I am with raised hands right now. I don't know if there's maybe a question about how you do that. Okay, so if you approve, let's just do that. If you approve, I've only I'm only got about eight right now raised hands. Okay, I think our hands got tired and we put them down. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do that. If you approve, just put approve in the chat box. If you want to use a number to say you strongly approve, use five. Um, or if you don't approve right now, you can give it a zero, or you can just say approve. So that's the other thing that I will say as our disclaimer to this meeting is that this is our very first collaborative meeting, as I mentioned. And so um, we are learning as we go with this first one. Um, and so please feel free to give us feedback and send any thoughts or, or ways to improve that, that you have um, as we, we work through this new structure. So. Um, while y'all are doing that, I'll keep it moving. Um, as a reminder, with this new collaborative, we didn't want to, we, we felt like all of our agencies spent so much time just sharing what we have going on because we all are doing such awesome work and we want the whole community to know about it. Um, and so we created a, just a, a Google Doc, a Google form um, where you can submit your events and activities before the meeting. So make sure you always watch your email um, to get that form so that you can submit your events. Um, the ones that we had submitted this time are at the end of the agenda for you. Um, so you can see those. I'm going to put the agenda link in the box again, just in case. Um, and then because it's our first meeting, I did want to give anybody who has an event or activity and didn't, um, wasn't able to, to submit it this first time an opportunity to share. Um, so we'll just spend um, maybe just five minutes or so if there's anybody that wants to share something with the group that they have going on um, that they weren't able to, to share before the meeting. I'll go since nobody else is going. <laughs> um, Tennessee Voices has started a virtual Zoom domestic violence support group. It meets on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. We are not at liberty to give out the link openly to the world, but if you will have whoever may be interested contact either me or Sue who is also on the call, then we can give them the link after we screen them briefly just to make sure that they're a good fit for the group. Also, the Survivor Connection Program is accepting referrals. And just as a brief description, we are um, working with anyone who's been a victim of a crime, whether it be sexual abuse, domestic violence. The children enrolled can be anywhere from zero to 24. So if there's parents who have younger children who witnessed it, we can enroll the child and still work with the parent. And um, I can also give you guys my email. And then I guess I'll send whoever you tell me to do um, the referral form. Or if you want it, you're welcome to shoot me an email. Thanks. I also have a quick announcement that unfortunately I wasn't able to get um, sent prior. <clears throat> um, I'm with Holston Habitat for Humanity, and we are planning um, the construction of a house in Elizabethton this spring. Um, with COVID, there are a lot of changes to our work sites to keep people and volunteers safe, um, but we are hosting a virtual meeting on Thursday, January 14th to talk about the project. Um, so if there are any individuals or any representatives from different businesses or churches or civic groups who would like to learn more about the project and perhaps um, participate as a volunteer or a sponsor for the project, we would invite you to join us for that Zoom meeting. Um, again, it is on January 14th and it's scheduled for 530. Um, I do not have the Zoom link to give you, but I will put information in the chat of who you can contact to get in, an invitation sent to you. Uh, 
Hi, this is Jane Harper, and I didn't get a chance to send this out either, but um, the, the health councils throughout the region are not meeting regularly yet. What we've decided to do is hold a regional meeting for all of the county health councils to come together and share some updates. So our first regional county health council meeting will be next week, Thursday on the 14th from 12 to 1 and I'll just send out an email to this list for anybody who's interested in getting the update um, that we're going to have Dr. Paula Masters from Ballad Health talking about what's going on with their 2021 uh, community health needs assessment and how we can participate in the process and she'll also update us on the strong accountable care community and uh, I'll find somebody from the department of health to share some updates about what we're doing with our COVID response. Thank you. Hi, Jillian. May I share? Um, this is Jill Stott. Um, we are um, the Northeast Council on Children and Youth, along with the Upper Cumberland Council and the East Council. Um, and we are co hosting with TSPN um, at Creating Trauma Sensitive Schools. Um, Becky Haas will be the trainer, and that is Friday, January the 29th, um, 9 a.m. until noon Eastern Time. Um, it is limited, since it is on Zoom, it's limited to 500 attendees. Um, and I can, I, I know Jillian and Jane usually sends that out as well. Um, I'm in my car, so I can't. Um, include the link, but if one of you all could send that out to the group, that would be great. I will add it to our minutes and make sure everybody gets it. Thank you. Hello. Um, I would like to speak about our program for just a second because it is a brand new program that's going to be offered for um, Carter County. It is the Women's Recovery Program. We will start taking applications February the 1st, and we have an opening date set for March the 1st. Our, um, this program is the first of its kind. It's using a two-generational approach. Um, our mission is to establish life-changing healing approach to substance abuse and mental health care by fostering lifelong independent living for current and future generations of the families in the Appalachian Highlands. Um, we will be focusing and taking applications for mothers with children 18 and under and pregnant women. So if you guys have any referrals, please just let us know. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Molly just put the link for the TCCY event in the chat for anybody that wants it. Um, if anybody has anything that they want us to send out, please put it in the chat so we can keep up with it all there. Anybody else have anything to share? Jillian, uh, yes. this is Vicki Clark with UT Extension. We don't actually have an event I want to promote right now, but I did want to let everyone know we do have a, a vacancy coming up in our uh, office. We will have a part-time 4-H program assistant position available probably starting around February. If anyone knows someone who'd be interested, it'd be a 25-hour-a-week position with UT uh, here in Carter County, primarily working with 4-H and 4-H clubs in the schools. Thank you for helping us recruit for it. Yep, thank you. Anybody else? Hi, uh, Julian. I said Jordan here with Keep Card County Beautiful. Sorry I joined late, but I had a little bit of problem getting into the proper link. Anyway, I'm here, and uh, I, just, I think everybody's pretty much aware of what Keep Card County Beautiful is, uh, is attempting to do in our mission of all the volunteers we have. And it, uh, it, it, it also, instead of just uh, a lot of people think all we do is pick up trash and clean up, uh, clean up the highways and creeks and so on and so forth. Uh, we have our tentacles into a lot of uh, schools and into the uh, churches and into organizations. Uh, we also work with beautification of our community, planting trees on the Tweety Trail and helping the downtown beautification uh, program committees uh, 
acquire flowers and plants for downtown. Uh, one of the biggest things of our of our organization is is our awareness program to try to make people aware of what they're doing to our environment by destroying it, by throwing out this horrendous amount of plastics and garbage on our roads and byways and the impact it has on animals uh, that come down to eat some of this uh, fast food wrappers. Uh, it actually endangers drivers that's about to swerve to miss an animal or actually keep running over an animal, killing it. So there's a lot of tentacles in our group. Um, we also work in uh, diligently with law enforcement to try to apprehend these folks that are doing this type of stuff. And But the biggest thing is awareness, so please put the word out about it's our one and only environment we have. Um, there was some uh, Keep America Beautiful sent me a, uh, uh, they send every once in a while a, a, a fact sheet, and uh, they're saying in about two more years that we're going to have more pounds of plastic in our oceans than fish. A lot of people here in the mountains, great mountains of East Tennessee, don't realize they do not realize that anytime they throw something out, it ends up in storm drains, flows down in the creeks and down the river it goes and ends up in our oceans eventually. And uh, the molecules, plastic molecules uh, in our Tennessee, Tennessee, beautiful Tennessee River, it is the most polluted river in the world with uh, plastic molecules. And that uh, was a study that was done by the University of uh, Tennessee down in Knoxville. And that's one of our quizzes that we ask people when we go out, we put up several rivers that's in foreign countries and uh, no one ever guesses that our great Tennessee River is the most polluted river in the world with plastic molecules. They're finding plastic molecules in human feces now in our blood. So it's going coming full circle. And this is the breakdown of the plastics that, that's, that's been thrown out and it's uh, getting into an environment, into our fish that we eat. So it's, it's very dangerous, it's, it's ugly. It makes people not only come visit us and spend tax dollars here, but it's dangerous. So if you can please, please pass the word. Uh, it, don't throw trash out the window, they don't just uh, illegally dump. So we've had some very successful illegally dump sites cleaned up. We have slowed down. Uh, because of COVID cleaning up things. What we did do, we did remove a thousand tires uh, from over here in Cherokee National Forest back in the fall. Uh, and I call it the mud fest because we all got soaked with mud because it was full of water and stuff. It was a cold day. But we had about 30 volunteers uh, from at the region that met over there and we cleaned up over a thousand tires. So we're working on those issues too. Thank you for your time. Questions, please email me at keepcardcountybeautiful at gmail.com. Thank, thank you. you. Yes, thank you. Okay, so we are going to move into our sharing session for today. Um, I'm really excited to have Susan Miller with us. She is the Director of Translation and Dissemination <laughs> for Opioid Overdose at the Tennessee Department of Health. And she is going to share some awesome information with us about their data dashboard and some cool things that they've got going on. So Susan Miller. Howdy, and I'm going to need the uh, host to allow me to share. Yes, ma'am. Let's see here. Okay, see if that got it. Okay. How's that go? Oh, good, great. Awesome. Now, somebody shout out the Magenta. color. Magenta. Oh, well, nice, nice try. Green is the correct answer. Sorry. <laughs> um, when you're the host, you take some liberties, right? Um, so, uh, or the presenter rather. So I do thank you all for being here today. I'm Susan Miller. I'm with the Tennessee Department of Health. And I was invited and asked to speak about some drug overdose data that the Department of Health has available. It's on the website, it can be shared broadly, and these can be uh, helpful tools as we think about program planning and what you're doing in your um, communities. Okay. So I want to make sure, is everybody seeing the values slide and are you seeing pictures off to the side or are you able to see the whole slide? Oh, 
The whole slide. Beautiful. Yeah, I, the whole I slide. The whole slide. That's what I want to make sure is happening. Okay. So uh, before I go any further, when we talk about data, I always want to come back to a couple of values that the Office of Informatics and Analytics hold. That includes numbers matter. Every number is a story. Every story is a person. That's why numbers matter to us. We know what they mean. We know they represent people. They represent families and communities. I would never want to end a presentation and someone say, that lady just made me feel like another number. That is not true. We use these numbers to help direct our, direct our efforts and so that we can be good stewards of our resources. Additionally, we believe data belongs to community, but data belong to communities. And we want to reunite communities with their data. Now, it is being recorded, but I'm from Nashville and it would not be doing me a bit of good if I didn't give you a little song today. So when we think about reuniting, we sometimes say, reunited and it feels so good. Oh, Jennifer down there, you're giving me a little shout out. I love it. Um, but then it's also the next line is reunited because we understood. So we want to move on to the understanding part of this. Um, what are the data and what do they actually mean and what's going on with them? So. There's what is about to happen today. Hold on to your paper flying airplane, um, which is much easier to travel these days, paper flying airplane than for real. Um, uh, and we're gonna go through some updates on data resources that are available. And then I'm gonna go through a new and improved data dashboard. So hold on to your hats, here we go. I have listed in these slides the website where you can reach and find these um, resources. I have a little joke um, and I say, if you have that family treasure you wanted to hide and no one find, consider moving it to a gov government website because no one will ever be able to find it. And we always misspeak and say, oh, it's out there on the web. And you might as well throw it into one of those sad polluted oceans because it's such a hard thing to find these days in our web, right? So I wanna make it that easy that you can go out there and snag these uh, websites and be able to find what I'm showing you today. When you click on this link, you're going to land at this picture with the beautiful puzzle, facts and figures. When you land, when you scroll down that facts and figures, you're gonna get to reports and presentations. And if you haven't been out there, even in the last week, some of this has been moved around a little bit. So it's a, a nice little treasure hunt. Right now, we have added some new hospital reported non-fatal <laughs> overdose. This is the one where, go ahead and give yourself a little pinch on the arm because uh, wake up, listen up. These are new reports. And for folks who are looking for the most recent data that is publicly available, this is where you're gonna go. How recent is it? We've got information back just from November 2020 available now on these data. So there, it's happening in about a month. Um, and this is hospital data that's being reported as part of surveillance. If you click on that November report, you're going to see, uh, and of course it'll be a lot bigger than this and you won't have to get out your glasses too much, um, but these are going to be data that provide you um, information on folks who have overdosed and had an encounter at a hospital. Now, that's important to remember, they've had to, go, they've had to have an encounter in an emergency department or uh, in a hospital somewhere. And this is now being reported back as surveillance for opioid overdose. At the bottom of this image, you see a heat map. That heat map is not going to tell you numbers because we do have to follow HIPAA guidelines, but it is going to give you an idea of where activity is taking place. So you can look up in your region and say, ooh, over here is where we're seeing that happen. I do offer this big tip. Go ahead and scroll to the bottom of that report and actually read the notes. It will help you know what you're really seeing. Additionally, I'm not sure if you're aware there's a pandemic going on. And some of the hospitals are saying, hmm, we have some things going on and we may not get these reported as quickly as we had originally planned. So give it a couple of days. Sometimes these numbers may uh, become more uh, 
find, uh, they'll, they'll be able to capture more hospitals and there's going to be more reporting. As you scroll down the reports and presentations, you'll also come to the new fatal overdose reports. This report was just uh, uh, released in uh, maybe September, October of this year. And this is going to provide the 2019 fatal overdose, um, overdoses that happened in Tennessee. If you click on that report, you're going to get a nice report. We all love, I, you know, I'm a government worker. We love reports like we love a boyfriend. Um, as you, oh, let me go back up. If you were to open that report, you would find the 2019 death information. I went ahead because 2018, 2017, other reports are available. And so I wanted you to have a table to look at and to be able to compare what you're seeing from year to year. But this gives you an idea of what's happening in Carter County uh, as far as fatal overdose goes. Additionally, the, we have all ready to use, ready to use slides um, available for anyone. So go out there, uh, look through those slides, grab some of them, stick them into your presentations, and as you were talking with folks, they will inform the information of what's going on in Tennessee. So here are some of the slides that I've pulled to share. We see that we are seeing across Tennessee an increase in drug overdose deaths from 2015 to 2019. Epidemiologists like me usually share things in about a five-year increment. So that's why we went to make it something, you know, to make it digestible. Here, people ask questions. Well, what kinds of uh, drugs are people overdosing and dying from? And we know that uh, when we think about drugs and looking at what might be in a person's system, it's not that there's just one thing. People have poly uh, drug use also, polysubstance use is what you may hear it referred to if you're talking with somebody from the Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services. We have county level information available so that you can see where your county is uh, in your region. Additionally, an easy to use infographic was developed from the information in this report. This, like I said, all of these things, feel free to print them off, send them, use them, review them, uh, and, and certainly take the time to uh, think about what this might mean for your program and your clients. Oh, okay, so that's the fatal overdose information. Let's scroll down to some special reports. Recently, uh, I would say in the last, just the last few weeks, a hefty report about buprenorphine Buprenorphine is that medication-assisted treatment, MAT, that we often hear about, and people have had a lot of questions about it. I, I can't imagine that you're going to have many more questions after you look at this report. So this is going to provide some information about what's going on with medication-assisted treatment across Tennessee. Another topic of conversation has been, did we see increase in Tennessee drug overdoses during COVID? And a uh, one-pager has been developed to provide some information and some insight in that. And that is something that certainly people are looking at and reviewing these data. So those are some all ready to go resources that are available. They're gonna be PDFs, they're gonna be PowerPoints, you're gonna be able to pull those and, and use them. But Tennessee also has a data dashboard that's interactive. And so this is where you have a chance to go out and add what you're thinking about and ask some of the questions that you want to drill down to in your county, in your region. If you were to click on this link, you would land at this data dashboard. We have added a new look and it has some new data sets. I do want to give this little asterisk. We are still reporting 2018 drug overdose deaths. We just got those deaths a couple of months ago for 2019, and they're being currently added to the dashboard now. Uh, it was something I was hoping would be done by this presentation, but they're still working on it. So once you land on the dashboard, you have counts or rates, which are you can click to decide what you would like to see, fatal or non-fatal overdose. The non-fatal overdose that you see in this dashboard actually comes 
from hospital discharge data. It is not the same as those monthly reports that I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation. Hospital discharge data is billable data. And, you know, it, it probably wasn't designed for me to sit here and say, this is what's happening here and this is what hap is happening there. But my data scientists are not going to leave a stone unturned. If there's some data out there, they want to know what can we learn from it. And although it may not tell us something exactly, it certainly can give us an idea of where we could be seeing some trends and what we can be thinking about. And, and so it's good data and we certainly don't want to leave it unreviewed. Um, New data that have been added include some socio-demographic data from the American Community Survey Census. Additionally, we have information here on how to use this data dashboard. And then we're gonna dive deeper into the data. So here we go. Oh, I got too excited. There's also a glossary of terms because you gotta always have a glossary of terms. Let's start with number one some of the socio-demographic data. Let's start with economic status. So here you have the choice of uh, percent living in poverty, median household income, unemployment rate. Just for an example today, I've added in median household income. So we have the count and of fatal overdoses in Tennessee, and we have median household income right here on one image. If you were to go to the bottom and select some of the information about how to use this tool, it will provide you some guidance on what you're seeing and what's included in all of these different layers as we think about thinking about these data and as, as you think about the timeframes included with these data. Additionally, if you're a person who's looking to do a grant or you want to use this information, oftentimes they want to know, where'd you get this information? And so here you can go and find those data sources. And you know, we want things to be copy paste, make it simple. Maybe it's not simple, but easier to use. How about that? So let's dig deeper into some of these data. Fatal overdose. Like I mentioned, we are still seeing only up to 2018, but I've added some information for y'all as we go through these uh, data. When you get into the fatal drug overdose trends by county, the first thing you're gonna see is a map. And at the bottom, you're going to see Tennessee. But let's start here on the left-hand side. This is something that our substance use prevention coalitions requested. They said, we like the dashboard, but we're doing a lot of control print screen then having to crop and do some different things. Can you give us something that will allow what we're seeing on the dashboard to be converted into a PDF or a PowerPoint slide? So it took some um, doing, but here we are. If you were to click, this arrow goes back to the beginning, the home page of the dashboard. This will make a PDF. And then this handy P button will make a PowerPoint slide. So if you click that, here's what you're gonna get. Uh, you're going to know when the slide was made, which is important because these data will be updated as we have new information. And then you're going to have a slide of what you're seeing on the screen. Okay, let's look at what's available to include in the slide. We have drop-down boxes. You have the options of counts or rates. Some of the drop-down box uh, indicators include drug overdose deaths involving heroin. Maybe that's something you're interested in seeing over time. Additionally, as you go to the bottom of the page, you have the option to look at fatal overdose, overdose deaths by county or region. So, if I were to select just for Carter County, here's the information I'm going to get. But as I indicated, we're missing the 2019, so I put it off here to the side uh, in the square until we can get that information placed into the dashboard. Once we go back to the home page, we can come over to the updated prescribing data. These are data from 2019. This is the information coming from the controlled substance monitoring database. That is that big database folks are using 
to help ensure uh, that opioids and benzodiazepines are being prescribed appropriately. Oh, so here, like I said, you have the option to uh, look at these categories, consider the opioid for pain type, consider the year. There's a scroll where you can make the year go from the beginning to the end. Um, additionally, you have the option to look at just your county. I wanted to throw this up to say, be aware. That all button, if you select it, you're gonna get a hot mess. So you don't wanna always have the all button selected. Um, if you're trying to tease out what you're interested in, you may wanna look at a few counties uh, at a time. If you're looking at rates, you may consider adding in the rate for Tennessee. If you just do counts, you're gonna have a big number for Tennessee and a small number for the counties. So it, it may not be a visual that's helpful to you. But there's no wrong things here. Go out, uh, engage with this uh, application, use it and, uh, and ask questions. And I promise once you start clicking things and changing colors, it gets so exciting. You'll wanna just keep going. Okay. As we look at the opioid for pain prescription trends in, Tennis, in, in Car, um, Carter County, sorry, just Carter County, we have seen a decrease. And you know, this has been something that we've been seeing statewide, and this did not happen overnight. And so I want to say and acknowledge a lot of people, people on this, uh, in this Zoom right now worked really hard to see these changes take place. Are we perfect? No. Is it better? I really think it is. And when you think about the number of patients decreasing, perhaps that's that, that young athlete who has had an injury coming in, someone will take a minute to think about what's the very best um, care for that person. And, and maybe uh, it's not gonna be a, a 30 day supply of a very powerful opioid. Um, so these are things that have taken a lot of uh, time, energy, it's been a lot of political will, um, and certainly the will of communities. And so this is, um, I certainly always want to highlight the, the work that people are doing. Of course, as we think about people's prescriptions for opioids, um, perhaps being more limited, we also want to encourage that if folks do need assistance, that they are able to uh, find services that they need such as medication-assisted treatment. As we think about benzodiazepine prescriptions, these data are also available into 2019. And here we are for Carter County. Like I said, all of these categories, the benzodiazepine type, uh, the county and region, you have the opportunity to change those so that you can find what you're looking for. Okay, so when we come back to the home page, remember use that arrow at the top, we can get to the non-fatal overdoses. And these are non-fatal overdoses from that hospital discharge data. Here we can see Carter County, Carter County and our inpatient stays. That's gonna be your overnight hospital stays involving all drug overdose. You have many different choices here inpatient stays involving stimulant overdose, outpatient, stay, uh, outpatient visits involving stimulant overdose. Outpatient visit is basically an emergency department visit. So many, uh, many folks are asking about stimulants and this is a place to kind of go in and start learning about uh, what's going on in your county. Certainly, if you're questioning, what do all of these different topics mean? I don't know what this definition is. If you scroll down, uh, we've tried to use some plain language on what these data uh, represent. And then click back to the non-fatal overdose and you'll go back to start. Let's talk about overdose demographics. One thing to keep in mind is when we get down to overdose demographics by age, sex, and race, these data are not released at the county level. We have to be HIPAA compliant and be aware of patient privacy. Sometimes these data may be available in a large metropolitan county um, 
and, uh, and, and that's released by perhaps a Metro Health Department. Um, you may also find different information because other agencies may not have the same laws that we do, uh, such as law enforcement data. But we have good information and we always want to use it for the, the, what, what we can. Here you have non-fatal overdose and fatal overdose. You have different options, uh, just like you do uh, on the other, uh, what you're seeing, and you can see uh, sex, age, and race. By clicking the back button, we go back to start. So here's what happened today. I provided some updates on some data resources that are available, including the uh, monthly non-fatal overdose reports on uh, opioid overdose reports, as well as the new 2019 drug overdose death report. And I provided some tips on using and navigating the new and improved data dashboard. And in all of this, we wanted to highlight Cardinal County because that's who I'm chatting with today. Uh, my contact information, I'm susan.miller at tn.gov. Thank goodness during all of this, I have walked through, I think, five pairs of Nikes. They just keep sending me sales. And um, once I get them down to $30, I just buy two pairs at a time now. <laughs> I've got to get my walks in or I get a little loopy. So I certainly um, want to open it up for any questions or you have my email, feel free to email me any questions and I'll get back to you if not today or tomorrow, next week. Thank you so much for being here. Anybody have questions for her? I just have a comment. I thought this was very educational. I did not know that all of this information was in that website and you could drill down so far as that you could get the counties and that it actually is pertinent data, like so recent. So I think that this is amazing. And I just wanted to thank you for like walking us through that so that we could actually find what you're talking about. So thank you, this has been very educational. Oh, that's wonderful to hear. And certainly uh, the folks with whom I work, they're a, a, an incredible team. I call them data scientist superheroes because they're able to really try to take, you know, heavy uh, language and, and like, okay, these are ICD-10 codes and this is what it means here and make it um, understandable that I can have a conversation, you know, with my parents about what we want to actually talk about and what's really going on. And so, um, you know, they do, uh, they work really hard and they really care. And when coalition members or folks like y'all who are working in the field of working one-on-one uh, -on -one with um, programs and with community members have suggestions or recommendations, they may not get to them right away, but they hear it. And certainly it does impact what they do later. Stephanie Strutner was one who was saying, we really want to have a button where we can click that PDF and make it a PowerPoint. So it's easy to use. And it, it took some doing and some actual chats with the Tableau, which are the, the folks who designed the software, to say, how, how do we make that happen? But, you know, those are things that they will, uh, they really don't give up and they want to provide useful tools for communities. So, you know, uh, they love to hear back from what, what is missing or what can be enhanced or what's helpful. So uh, I will pass on that good praise because they certainly deserve it. And we do know that it takes a couple of months to get those prescribing information for 2020, um, but that should be coming out, uh, you know, within the next uh, within the next little bit. And um, and every year they do an annual report, and that comes out uh, around March or April. So Molly, go ahead. Sorry, I'm sorry, Susan. Could you repeat the website that where we find all this information? So I have sent um, uh, Dolly the slides. So I am happy to, the one slide is missing because I rem remembered I needed to go back and add it really quickly, was the value slide. Sometimes I just say that. So that's the only one you're missing, but if you're okay to not have that one, she, she's got the good stuff where it's going to have the links. And it's sometimes nice to just see what I've circled to say, oh my goodness, because like I said, 
Um, if you've got a family recipe, you know, if you've got the Coca-Cola formula, you go put it on that, you know, some of our government websites, nobody will ever find it. So we wanted, we don't want that to be the case. We want you all to, um, if people work too hard on this to, to not make it that you can get there and actually find what you need. Thanks you. Susan, I have a question. Um, sure. Tony DeLucia. Um, you mentioned writing grants. Um, I think that this is fascinating stuff uh, to look at from a broader perspective. For example, I'm looking at uh, the 420 counties of the Appalachian Regional Commission, the 252 counties of the Delta Regional uh, Association. And uh, of course, that would look at Tennessee from the Mississippi River Delta or Mississippi River to Appalachia. And, and of course, you would find striking differences. Is your data downloadable to scientists and researchers and advocates to try and put together the case for, for change? And the reason I ask you is, uh, you know, I, I joined the American Planning Association and we're working on things like COVID and climate change. And that includes since last year, we're looking at a transformative time. Uh, where we're looking at building places different, differently, so that jobs and um, uh, you know uh, education and environment, and you can just run the table. All these things are going to be different during COVID, post COVID, than they were pre COVID, and we have to have data. We have to look at things that involve mental health physical health, social health, spiritual health, environmental health, as well as the broader picture of economics. Is this available? Is the state of Tennessee and its agencies willing to provide um, users this information? Because otherwise we're gonna be looking at how can we repeat this and we cannot. And at the local level, if you have home rule, you need to be looking at this kind of stuff. So, Currently, that we don't have a link on um, the dashboard where it's going to give you like the CSV or an Excel uh, of those data, but you can request those. That's something that's being worked on because we want that to be out there. Um, but you, we have a data request form and it really is a simple to use form. And it says, what do you want? And Certainly, if you're asking for data that are already available out on the dashboard, these are going to be data that uh, can be easily shared. Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to, I have a nice little typed up email with that information. I'll send that to Dolly, if that's okay, Dolly, thumbs up, okay, and then she can share that with the group. As far as uh, the new reports go, uh, uh, we can, that, that, that information is out there for Tennessee. Certainly what we are seeing as the, as the heat map, that's not going to be down to the numbers until, uh, uh, because of, you know, it's still preliminary data and that sort of thing. Um, but certainly everything out on the dashboard, anything that's in the uh, fatal overdose reports and that sort of thing are shareable. And, um, you know, if, if you have things that are, that you want to know that aren't there, Never hurts to ask because they may be an indicator that uh, we collect for CDC, but nobody's really, you know, we're trying to figure out how would this be helpful to the community and there might be a reason you're asking it. So um, I want to be mindful of our time um, and uh, not sure what you have left for today, but certainly as folks have any questions, please use my email. And if I can't get it for you, um, I, you know, I'm a good connector to the folks who have that information. Thank you so much. Thank you, Susan. Um, Molly has a couple of questions in the chat box. If you oh. will kind of check there, um, I'm going to just for the sake of time, keep us moving. But um, if you don't mind to hang around and anybody can put additional questions in the chat, if that's okay with that's you. Good. Um, and so at this point, we are going to talk about our committees. So um, 
I'm going to ask Dolly to, to share now about the three committees. Um, I have, if you haven't told me which committee you want to be on, I've asked you in the chat to let me know, so please do that. Um, I'm, I'm going to assign our breakout rooms since I just want to know where to put you. Um, please know that these are fluid groups, so just because you choose one today doesn't mean you can't choose another one when you hear all the awesome stuff a different committee is doing. Um, but if you will let me know which committee you want to be on, and Dolly's going to share more about each of these committees now. All right. Um, Happy New Year, everyone, and welcome again to the inaugural Carter County Collaborative Meeting. Um, first off, I just want to thank Susan Miller again for such a wonderful presentation. I love the energy that she brings when she, when she presents. So Susan, wonderful job, and I'm just going to kind of give you a little round of applause there. So thank you, and I hope I, <laughs> uh, you are kind of a hard act to follow in terms of energy levels. So I hope uh, I, I serve okay here. Um, well, yeah, so the remainder of our meeting is just going to be focusing on committees. Um, as a reminder, uh, as being part of this collaborative, uh, each member is required to participate in a committee. And so I'm going to be talking about each one, um, the purpose of these committees, and uh, show a template of an action plan for one, some, some goals for today, and talking about the roles and responsibilities of the committees and chairs. So um, now I will slow down. So there are um, three committees. Uh, we have the Substance Abuse and Mental Health. We have the Community Action Awareness, uh, um, oh my gosh, Community Action and Awareness and the Community Assessment. So um, the purpose of these committees is just designed so that we can work together to better serve our communities in an efficient and unified manner. So by breaking up uh, major objectives through these three committees, everyone can play to their strengths and abilities to help um, make the work that we do uh, possible and feasible. So each committee has been given an action item template that can be found in the link that I shared in the chat. It might have to scroll up just a few comments. Um, is also a, a link to the agenda that was emailed to you. Um, this, these, the template that you see is just going to be with suggested projects and tasks to work on and you are encouraged, each committee is encouraged to create subcommittees as needed to help um, reach these, these goals. So I am going to share my screen briefly just to show you what, um, what the action item or action plan template looks like. Um, do I have those screen sharing capabilities? Bear with me while I get that up in really quick here. I always feel like when I share my screen, it never shows what I want it to. So let me make sure I have that prepped so it does so accordingly. All right. Okay. Can everybody see the Committee A, Substance Abuse and Mental Health? Mm -hmm. Okay, this is one of the committees that we have. I went ahead, um, I'm already the designated chair for this committee, so I went ahead and, and started the work on, on what a, a action template, action plan template looks like. Um, this, is, this is just a template. It's just designed to provide direction for your, sub, your committees. Um, the biggest thing, about this is that you don't have to use this, but we just want there to be something that shows an outline of the work that's going on so we can track progress accordingly. Um, as you'll see, the, I have the, submitted, the, the committee name and then I have the major objectives. I'm not gonna read through it, but just to give kind of a, the basics here, you just put the objectives to what the committee is. I started a list of objectives. So you can change it and adapt it when we go into our breakout rooms. And then I also have down here, I broke out those um, objectives into uh, action plan temp, uh, tables. So I have the activity right here, the frequency and the goal on, on how to uh, uh, achieve that. And you can also do a third column for names uh, to delegate roles to people as well. So uh, once again, not to bore, not to read through. I know we have limited time, so this is very brief. I just want you to see what you're looking at so that when you go into your breakout rooms, you, you know what you're looking at and what you can talk about. All right, I'm going to stop sharing on that. That way I can get back to kind of my outline and notes here and be able to talk. 
All right, so each committee today, the biggest role for each committee is to go through these action plans, talk about what the remainder of the time we have left is very limited, um, just to kind of look over these objectives, see if you agree. You can also accordingly uh, email each other and talk about those objectives outside of the meeting if you have time. Uh, but the biggest thing today is to see if you can um, assign a chair for, for, those, for those committees. Um, so at the end of today, the goal is just to be able to email us or put in the chat box who the chair is for those two remaining committees prior to that. Um, the responsibilities, I do want to know what you're getting into before you accept it. The responsibility of the chair is to oversee committee projects, create agendas for each meeting to share with your committee, or objectives on what will be worked on and addressed when you meet each month. Um, submitted update form for the agenda prior to each CCC meeting. That will be emailed to everyone. Um, be the spokesperson and point of contact for the committee and projects. Report progress and updates for the entire group as needed or when asked. And just basically report to the chair of Carter County Collaborative. So just kind of where that hierarchy is. Each month from 1245, some, sometimes it varies. We'll go with the flow, but, but the goal is each month from 1245 to 130, we'll go into the breakout rooms with our respective committee members. So we're going to give that a short trial run today with our, with our remainder of our time. So Jillian is now going to assign us to our rooms and we will break out um, until 1.30, which we will conclude the meeting for the month. So just remember to nominate your chair and let us know who it is before logging off. Um, I know there's a lot of information thrown at you really fast. Any questions? I am putting in the chat box the link um, to the three action plans. So it's, again, just on that same agenda that we've been pulling up all day, um, but they're the very last pages. So that's in the chat for you all. Um, so if, again, just to recap, if today you all can decide on a chair and if you have a few minutes to start thinking about goals and, and this action plan, um, go ahead and do that as well. So I'm going to put you in rooms now. If I don't know where to put you, you'll probably be hanging out with me in here for a second and I'll figure out where you're going. So here we go, hopefully. Okay, Cheryl, where would you like to go? Jennifer, are you good with B, you think? Okay. Kathleen A, assuming? Yes. Okay. Um, Rebecca, where do you want to go? I believe A. Okay. Uh, Suzanne. Suzanne and Cheryl. Where do y'all want to go? Um, I guess A. A? Okay. And this is Suzanne, right? Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. And then Cheryl, where do you want to go? minutes for this one too because Jillian Reese hates me and I would just like to put that on record I see she just popped in here and she's nodding her head yes so. nailed it <laughs> nailed it so I'm I'm here but I'm going back on mute just to listen to everybody else talk well, did you want me to do this Jillian was this what we yeah talked about? okay great can. I'm ready I'm ready All right yes <laughs> Yes. Hello, everybody. Um, I am Courtney Bean. I'm the Main Street Director for Downtown, um, Downtown Elizabethan, if that's not clear. Um, and really, I think the reason, so this conversation, so Jillian and then Kayla Carter is also on here. Um, 
there she is. Hey, so we've just been kind of chatting. Um, Main Street, we're decently new to our community. We've been around a little over a year. And in that year, we've been doing a lot of research. Um, Kathy Campbell's on here. She's actually a board member. So shout out to Kathy. Um, and we have a lot of downtown representation on here as well. So um, but in that year, we did a lot of research and found that one of our main focuses is going to be outdoor recreation and outdoor tourism. So um, the past month, actually, we kind of gathered a lot of people on this call as well. So Parks and Recreation with Mike and Kelly, Keep Carter County Beautiful with Ed, um, another uh, of other entities within Carter County to really look at outdoor recreation and communication and tourism and development as a whole within Carter County. And so um, when this group got started, we didn't know if um, this could, that could also be a subtopic of this group, if it, maybe it doesn't fit, but just kind of looking at, I think the whole purpose of all of these conversations is just Carter County coming together as a community to really support our community as a whole. And so what does that look like and how can our groups all support that? So I know outdoor recreation may not be everybody's topic, um, but perhaps there's different subtopics. We don't really know what this looks like, but just kind of throwing that out there. Does that, does anyone want to add anything, Jillian or Kayla? So I think that was yeah. perfect. I just stuck in the chat box. Um, if I think Kel has been volunteered um, to kind of take some notes. Um, so really today, if y'all can just spend a little bit of time looking at those goals, seeing if those goals are what you want to focus on, um, learning more about what Courtney and Kayla and, um, and everybody there have been kind of working on. So just developing a couple goals for this committee and then also designating a chair, um, somebody that's going to kind of, kind of be in charge. Um, so yeah, I just put the, the sort of starting place in the chat and I'm going to go away. Y'all got this. So. Oh, go team. We'll give everybody just a second to get back in here. All right, thanks everybody. I hope that went okay for our very first time. Um, again, I appreciate your um, understanding and, and us kind of navigating this new collaborative and I hope that those groups were helpful um, and will continue to be helpful in, in future meetings where we can spend more time working on those things. Um, if I could have just one person from each group share um, very, very quickly, just kind of where you are, if you have decided on a chair or any goals um, and anything you want the group to know, just really quickly. Um, so can we start with group A? Um, I'll go ahead. So um, group A, we just went through some of the objectives um, that were outlined and some of the action items and um, we are going to work together to create a list of um, awareness weeks and months coming up in recent times and um, prepare for those. We are also going to focus on uh, one action item, which is um, the work of a magazine for the collaborative. Thank you. Um, Committee B. Is that action and awareness? That was us. We were not as productive as group A. So way to go, group A. Um, we, 
<laughs> we um, were looking at a lot. And so I think that we were just trying to working through that and trying to develop some themes within the objectives to see how we can divide those groups because we have a lot of different topics at hand. So um, that is where we left the conversation. So we will pick it up from there. We have a few different um, action items about trying to find the right leader for the group. Love that. Thank you. I'm sure you all did just fine. Um, that's a big one. It's a big group of lots and lots of good stuff. So um, perfect. I will also say, I forgot to say this, I'm going to share everyone's contact information with everyone else, if that's okay. Um, just so if you, if your conversation needs to continue outside um, these monthly meetings that you have that, that for each other. Um, but we, we again, We'll meet again next month, same time, same place, um, and you'll be able to continue the conversation there too. So, all right, Committee C. Oh, I don't hear Jane. Did you not get my message, Jane? I, I'll take I'm sorry, I'll, I didn't get your message. <laughs> oh, I, I, I left a message for Jane because we were cut off at the very end. Hope everybody who was in our group is okay with this because we ran out of time at the very end. Uh, I ended up being um, gullible enough to uh, take on the chair. Uh, and it looked like there was no revolt when we took on uh, logic models that Tennessee, what was it called? Tennessee, go ahead, Jane. It is the Tennessee Together Survey. Which is on opioids and the, what was the other one? I mean, we went, we went all in. <laughs> Establishing subcommittees uh, for the community health assessment, Inc assessment. And encouraging and recruiting participants for the Tennessee Together Survey. So, so it was working on the, um, our, our part, Carter County, part of the needs assessment, logic models, and the um, Tennessee together. Big time, big time. Bold, beautiful. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. That sounds great. Okay, thanks everybody. Um, thank you for being here. Um, thanks for, for wading through this, this first meeting with us. Um, I hope that, that this continues to be as successful as I feel like today was. Um, our cab friends will be in charge next month. So um, we will be back the same, um, same meeting time, same meeting link. Um, all of those things, and we're excited to, to be together with you again next month. Um, if there are people that are not around this table that need to be around this table, please, please share um, the information with them. We want to make sure that we um, have as many voices represented as we can and um, I know there are lots of folks in Carter County doing good work that, that aren't on here yet, and so please, um, please, please share and spread the word. Um, Anybody else have anything before we wrap up? All right, we'll see you next month. Thank you. Bye.